Buenos is brought to you by Guam Police Department Recreational Boating Safety Program, Department of Public Health and Social Services, Division of Children's Wellness, Bureau of Child Care Services, Guam Economic Development Authority, Premier Dentistry, Pacific Daily News, and the Marianas Variety. What is in Havade, Marianas, Guam, see Pauli Suba. Today is Wednesday, March 29th. Following today's headlines, we have the breakdown on both the emergency session regarding GDOE facilities infrastructure and the special session on the general pay plan and how they overlapped. And now this morning's top stories from the Marianas Variety. Commonwealth Ports Authority officials have said the transition report on CPA was fraught with factual inaccuracies. Executive Director Christopher Tenorio said the transition report misinforms the administration of the state of CPA and its operations. And as such, the recommendations therein should carry little weight. But he did say CPA acknowledges some of the issues and concerns raised in the transition report, such as CPA's fiscal outlook, which must be addressed. And business owners and their representatives welcome the opportunity to partner with the MWR program, which involves 20,000 military personnel and their families in Guam. Maria Eileen Arnold of Islander Rent-A-Car said tapping the military market is a good opportunity because currently their only tourism market is Korea. Arnold added that MWR can market the small businesses in the CNMI for free. According to Joint Region Marianas, the active duty members' spending power amounts to $53.8 billion. Service members earn 30 vacation days a year, and nearly half of active duty members are married with an average of two children per household. According to the presentation, MWR programs offer commercial sponsorship for businesses that can identify products and services for the military market. And the expansion of the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument was discussed during a forum conducted by the Western Pacific Regional Fishery Management Council on March 27 and 28. Community members who attended the forum said they are opposed to the expansion of the National Monument, whose areas consist of approximately 495,189 square miles in the Central Pacific Ocean. The Hawaii-based Pacific Remote Islands Coalition has been proposing to extend the monument to 200 miles from 50 miles around two sets of islands. And Andrew Camacho of Fishermen said many in the Marianas rely on fishing to sustain their livelihood. He said with the expansion, it will be more difficult for him and others because it will also restrict their fishing area. The Office of the Attorney General through Chief Solicitor J. Robert Glass Jr. notified the Superior Court on Monday that it had duly served through certified mail former Department of Community and Cultural Affairs Secretary Robert Hunter with a complaint for excessive typhoon overtime pay and that such amounts should be returned to the Commonwealth Treasury. Glass said he conducted a public database search for Hunter and was able to get an address in Tucson, Arizona that matched with the one provided by CNMI Tax and Revenue. Glass said he worked with a process server in Tucson who unsuccessfully tried to serve Hunter on six different occasions from January 12th to the 24th of this year. For more on these stories and others, you can pick up a copy of the Marianas Variety or visit mvariety.com. And after the break, we have your headlines from the Pacific Daily News and the breakdown on Bill 29-37. Buenas and half a day, Marianas. The health of our community is our number one priority. Our people deserve access to integrated medical services here at home. And Guam's medical campus project is rapidly evolving from a notional future project to a current state-of-the-art quality health services center for Guam and the region. To learn more about the Guam Medical Campus and plans for land and infrastructure, financing, medical services, and more, visit us online at guammedicalcampus.com today. And now your headlines from the Pacific Daily News. The Contractors License Board Tuesday voted to issue a cease and desist order to the contractor handling the AV Wampat International Airport's baggage handling system and to fine the company $300,000 for working without a contractor's license for over a year. 
Menzies Aviation has been servicing the airport on an emergency basis since November of 2021, despite not having a license with the contractor's license board. The airport was paying a monthly service fee of $78,688, which was bumped up to $119,757 a month starting last July after an investigation was completed and legal opinion from the Office of the Attorney General finalized Tuesday. Board members opted to order the company to shut operations down. And Republican lawmakers are seeking arrest and criminal charges over the spreading of a false document bearing the initials of Senator Chris Duenas last week, which purported to cut funding to a recent raise for school teachers. The Republican caucus is calling for the legislature to convene a bipartisan investigative committee to look into the source of the forged document formatted as an amendment to Senator Duenas' Bill 32. They've introduced Resolution 67, which would authorize the creation of the committee. And in tourism news, the Guam Visitors Bureau is looking to showcase concepts from different villages that will help shape and implement Guam's first cultural tourism master plan using $20 million in federal American Rescue Plan funding. The more unique and sustainable village ideas, the better, according to the Guam Visitors Bureau. Funding will be from the $20 million that was initially set aside for GVB's canceled Smart Park at Epal Beach. Governor Lulian Guerrero is expected to make that funding whole again once she replenishes some of the $6.5 million of it. And finally, from the Pacific Daily News, Guam-based companies travel to Palau to showcase their locally made products to distributors, wholesalers and retailers as part of the first Palau trade mission organized by the Guam Economic Development Authority in partnership with the Western United States Agricultural Trade Association. The mission provides opportunities for Guam-based businesses to secure potential retail and wholesale distribution agreements. For more on these stories and others, you can log on to guampdn.com. And Senator Chris Barnett introduced Bill 29-37, which would require Guam Department of Education public school facilities to come into full compliance by the start of school year 2023-24. An emergency session was called after parents and teachers spent hours talking about the bad state of local schools at a round table on Friday, March 17th. GDOE's Deputy Superintendent of Operations, Erica Cruz, said 85% of GDOE's budget goes towards payroll. The students are the priority. That's our main priority. However, the funding that we're receiving is not enough to, to do much of anything. 85% of our, our funding goes directly to personnel. Uh, I, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, I want my child, I mean, my, my child is a product of a, a public, public school. I, I don't want him or any child, 26,000 students, to be in a in a uh, school that is not, uh, you know, fit to be in. Uh, however, the situation is we come down here all the time and ask for more money, but we don't get the money that we need. Unless a public school facility or operator is unable to comply with certain requirements of the rules and regulations, GDOE must show of good cause why compliance cannot be met by school year 23-24. Corrective action must also be in progress. And I support the general pay plan raises because I believe those are the hardest working for the most part. I don't know about these DOA $80,000 earners. I mean, maybe that's a conversation for another day. But I believe the GPP workers, especially in the school system where you have a clerk type is three who's also a cafeteria worker, is also a school aide, is also a one one aide, is also a assistant principal in some cases, right? They deserve it, but in order to do that, I feel like we have to address this situation with the schools and fix it so that I can go to sleep at night and say, yeah, I'm going to give you your 22%, but uh, you're going to be going to school in a facility that, you know, meets the basic, nothing fancy, just basic health and safety guidelines. So that's what we're here for. The bill would require public health to conduct immediate site inspections of all schools and provide monthly reports of corrective action taken to both the legislature and the Guam Education Board. Inspections would be required every year before school sanitation permits are required. Madam Speaker, we talk about oh, closing the schools. Well, didn't we just come through a pandemic when the schools were already closed and our kids were still learning online? We can still do that while repairing our schools.
So don't, I don't think this whole, you know, theatrics of, you know, we're going to shut down our schools, our kids are not going to learn anything. We've been through a whole situation where the school was shut down and the kids were learning online. And if it takes August, September, October to continue on to get these schools repaired, then they can do this online. There are ways around it. But there is no way around it when a child gets hurt because we were not responsible enough to put them in a place that was safe. Is that what we have to wait for? The director of public health would be able to grant exemptions to schools that are working to comply with sanitation regulations, but that won't be an option if the school's violations are so serious they result in closure or condemnation. My only reservation with this, and I support it, is that uh, the undo or the, the timeline and the timeliness, I wouldn't want to um, impose uh, something that you know, with a limited time on something that you obviously needs time to get fixed. So just want to be uh, a little bit cautious and, and just make sure that if we're going to do something, we're going to do it right. And um, although I see the need to, to address the school um, conditions, I, I wouldn't want to um, impose uh, uh, such a stringent timeline on the people that have to make the changes. Senator Joe Sinagazine, though, through, though in favor of Bill 29, said there should be amendments in order for the GDOE board to begin the work of creating the variance report now rather than waiting until August to submit a report of why a school facility may not meet requirements to safely open. But if they don't have a true plan, then it doesn't matter. We change it, school closes, we go eat, we go through, what's that, the electronic learning? No biggie, we've done it in, in, during the pandemic. Not an issue. But we just gotta be concerned is that they're true to what this bill does. You wanna put a variance? Tell us exactly how you're gonna do it? Show it. Put it in writing. Show us an RFP. Show us the funding that's gonna cover it. Not the excuse of we got this Guam and nothing happens. And every one of us are sitting here saying, I thought this bill would fix it. I believe this bill could fix it, but I think we need to speed up the time. And maybe the author would agree with me on that one and then we, we just move on. But I am in full support of changing this date, but I prefer to move it up. It'll actually put the dent on the heads of the people in charge. And if not, then we call upon the board to take the appropriate action. The board is a policy board. They hired the superintendent. They should have fixed it then. We got a new superintendent coming in. If they want to continue to be on the board, then take the appropriate action. Write the policy that fixes the schools, not make the excuse of why the delay. Senator Chris Barnett said he is surprised that no one has sued GDOE because of their failure to meet adequate education standards. He said he believes that Bill 29 will ensure that public school students will attend facilities that meet the standards required by law for a safe and adequate education in the public school system. Many of these PTO representatives, parents, we even had some students testify Friday. They were surprised at how much in common all of their schools had, many of them said, oh, I thought it was just our school that had a falling down ceiling or, you know, one working toilet for hundreds of students. Another thing that was said throughout the hearing was that they just wanted to be heard. They tried telling downtown. They get the runaround. The requests go to DOE Central to die. And so again in this hearing, they said it's nice for us to be able to speak and to be heard and to know that we are, we're being listened to. And that's exactly what this Bill 29 does is we hear you. We hear you students. We hear you teachers. We hear you staff. We hear you parents, guardians. We hear you that yes, it's always been this way, but Today, I'm just so humbled that my colleagues would stand in support of this measure so that we can really and finally make the changes that our students deserve so that next election when we say the children come first, that education is the priority, 
then they'll know that we really mean it. Two other bills pertaining to the state of GDOE were passed by the legislature. Bill number 32-37 COR appropriates $30 million in funding to GDOE for school maintenance repairs. And bill number 4637 COR expedites the procurement protest process for purchases GDOE makes with ARP and ESF funds. All three bills passed with 14 votes and one excused. After the break, we follow the 37th Guam Legislature again as they pass an amended version of a bill that seeks to increase the government of Guam's general pay plan by 22%. Buenas, it's in half a day, Marianas. What is in half a day, Marianas? For the past year, we've been bringing you your morning headlines from the Pacific Daily News and the Marianas Variety into your homes at 7 a.m. And we're excited to announce that One is in the morning is now... dun da 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 What is later in the morning? We're gearing up to give you more features, more insight, and more focus. Well, let's be honest. The coffee doesn't actually kick in for me until 9 a.m. anyway, so let's just own it. We're right here with you, getting you prepared, productive, and informed beginning at 9 a.m every weekday morning on PBS Guam and the CNMI. And the government of Guam's general pay plan increased to 22% is passed by a vote of 8 to 5 with two excused absences. However, notwithstanding amendments to the bill, an amendment authored by Senator Chris Barnett will appropriate the sum of $1.3 million from the general fund to the University of Guam for the purpose of paying salary adjustments to the employees affected by the GPP. By doing so, the University of Guam shall not raise tuition for any semester prior to September 30 of 2025. It is my understanding that the University of Guam is accredited by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges, aka WASC, senior for the educational facility, right? So with that being said, are we, is it safe to say that the author of this will not threaten accreditation of the University of Guam? Senator Barnett, do you yield to the question? Uh, Ma'am, if you don't mind, I, uh, the question again is would this amendment jeopardize? Accreditation into the University of Guam the intent of this amendment really is very simple. I don't want to be, uh, I, I want to give UOG, even though they could do it on their own, the 22%, um, but I don't want us to be caught in a position where we do this to uh, elevate the workers. And I know there's a lot of hard workers at UOG. I know some of them, you know, they're my friends. But I don't want to create a situation where we do this and then, you know, a couple months down the road, they announce that they're going to stock it to the students. They're going to nuke us if that happens. So I don't believe that it will uh, jeopardize their accreditation, uh, ma'am. UOG is a fine institution, and I think that um, it's fine. However, UOG did send out a release last night stating they are concerned that the restricting of tuition increases will be viewed as interference with a substantive decision of the university by the WASC Senior College and University Commission. In the past, the university has been cited for interference from external bodies as Bill and Bill 24 will also amend now uh, requiring the governor of Guam to submit to the legislature written plans to address the payments of merit bonuses owed to employees from 2012 to present. Also annual increments owed to employees and the financial assistance promised to Guam businesses in her recent state of the island address. I feel like I did my best here today in giving you that 22%, but that's gonna be it for a while. So make it last, because I don't think that we have the support or the conscience to support further pay raises. So that's why I voted yes today, because I feel like we, we have an obligation to help as many of our people as we can. And I say that we continue to do that with the LEAP program. Let's uplift the private sector. Let's create conditions that, that allow our private sector workers and businesses to thrive. And that, that's my commitment um, to this body. And again, uh, Madam Speaker, I want to commend my colleagues, and, and I understand why five of them voted no on this measure. And I know the debate was heated, but I'm just going to say I'm, I'm all for decorum, but when you fight fire with fire, everybody burns. 
Barnett also included an amendment that does not allow for unclassified positions in the government of Guam to receive an increase in fiscal year 2023. However, unclassified employees of mayoral offices, the Guam Election Commission, and federally funded positions are exempt from the amendment and can receive the increase in pay if Bill 24 is signed into law. I would uh, implore the governor um, to do her best to uh, encourage these limited term uh, employees and these uh, unclassified hires and even the uh, unclassified uh, political hires uh, to apply and, and compete for jobs just like uh, everyone else who, you know, is in the classified service. And so it had the Department of Administration come prepared and it's, it's really upsetting, you know, this is a huge proposal and ha having questions and asking for information has been painted as saying no to these raises and nothing could be further from the truth. We have an obligation and a duty to find out as much as we can. And with this huge proposal, we had the Department of Administration coming down here to the Guam Congress Hall. Uh, they didn't really have any supporting documents. They didn't have any charts. They didn't have, have any staffing patterns. We asked repeatedly about unclassified hiring. They couldn't even tell us how many unclassified people we're, we were, that were gonna be affected by this general pay plan. Instead, the answer we got was it was just a handful. And so had there been a genuine effort to inform us of just the basic information, I don't think we would uh, be, a, I don't think uh, my colleagues would have this level of uncertainty. And so yes, I would uh, implore the Department of Administration if there is language or if there is a process that you believe um, we can entertain here with this body, then I'm committed to, to entertain that uh, language. What I don't wanna do though is further enable this circumventing of the classified system because again I understand that there are certain situations where you're in a pinch and you have to put somebody in a warm body quickly uh, to move but when when we hear about the prevalence of these LTAs and these LTAs are just rolled over year after year after year I mean it's not fair to them either because they don't get to avail of the retirement they don't get to avail of the benefits but what they do get to avail of is a salary that's commensurate with classified employees who oftentimes have worked hard for the people of Guam for a number of years to achieve that level of pay. With the exception of Senator Telotadegui, who was excused from attending the special, special session, the current remaining Republican caucus all voted no on Bill 24 that would increase the general pay plan by 22%. When we're passing a percentage higher than we're paid to the teachers, than we paid to the police officers, and the other critical positions last year, we said were absolutely priority and absolutely necessary. By passing this bill, you're giving them less than everyone else. It's actually upside down rather than right side up, which is where it should be. And you're making a decision to put this additional burden on our people without even really knowing what the full implications are. As if money of the last three years is gonna flow forever, that the next five, 10, 15 years, you're gonna be able to sustain this long-term obligation without knowing really what you're supporting. So I, I have to say, colleagues, I hope you're a little more mindful of that because the time will come, and trust me, if I'm here, I'm gonna be here to remind you. I'm gonna remind you about the irresponsible decisions you made and the false promises and the false illusion you're creating even to the GovGuam workers that you're saying you're here to help because that few hundred dollars of payday ain't gonna make a difference to them. And yet the high end, and Madam I've been Chair, there, Madam Chair, time at the clock. high end, I'm gonna wrap up. Don't worry. Stop being so smug and, and snotty. You haven't oh, even arrived. Just like when yet. you got a hundred and sixty-nine thousand dollar salary. Order, order. Senator Brown. Hey, please point of personal vote. privilege here. Please stay your point please. of personal well, privilege as well. Bring up Senator these, Kanata, excuse me. Senator Kanata. You know, these some of these colleagues here who've just arrived are so rude and obnoxious and making statements of their own reality. It's not factual. I can speak for myself. I don't need you to interject. I'm going to wrap up my co comments, Madam Chair, but I think this is the kind of nonsense our people really need to be mindful of what they're seeing here because they're the ones ultimately that are going to suffer the consequences. Senator Will Parkinson said the government pay increase is timely due to record inflation rates coming out of the COVID pandemic. He said he was disappointed that Bill 24 came down to a party line vote and that some of the arguments from senators were disingenuous and intended to muddy the waters. In a spirit of full transparency, I wanted the people of Guam to know 
that this was never a question of due diligence. This was always obstruction in disguise. With that, I thank my Democratic colleagues for passing this bill and getting the people the pay raise they need. And with that, I yield the rest of my time, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Bill 2437 now is under review, awaiting the governor's signature. Coming up, we have your COVID recovery report, weather forecast for Guam and Saipan, as well as tonight's archaeology series schedule that will air on PBS KGTF Channel 12. The health of our community is our number one priority. Our people deserve access to integrated medical services here at home. And Guam's medical campus project is rapidly evolving from a notional future project to a current state-of-the-art quality health services center for Guam and the region. To learn more about the Guam Medical Campus and plans for land and infrastructure, financing, medical services, and more, visit us online at guammedicalcampus.com today. The Northern Region Community Health Center in Dededo offers COVID-19 testing for travel pre-departure needs at a minimal cost of $40 and is limited to 10 persons a day. Payments cash or credit card are accepted at the Dededo Clinic cashier's window from Monday to Friday at 8 a.m. Payments will be required on the day of testing. Patients will need to bring a copy of their receipt as proof of payment along with a valid ID and proceed to the testing site in the NRCHC front parking lot. To view the most up-to-date COVID-19 information, including weekday surveillance summary reports, you can visit dphss.guam.gov slash COVID-19 or guamrecovery.com. For inquiries, you can contact 311 through a local number. Apologies once again for the technical difficulties, but on the on a good note, right? Cue the Humpty Dance because it's Wednesday. On behalf of the entire PBS family, Sadus Mossy for tuning in. Zen Biba mes tomorrow. Buenas. Zen half a day, Marianas. Buenas is brought to you by Guam Police Department Recreational Boating Safety Program. Department of Public Health and Social Services, Division of Children's Wellness, Bureau of Child Care Services, Guam Economic Development Authority. Premier Dentistry, Pacific Daily News, and the Marianas Variety.